Dear members of the State Commission, colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, the State Commission on Piloted Space Vehicles decided to certify the prime and the backup crews for Soyuz TMI-15M. Earlier, the Chief Engineers Commission and the State Commission listened to the reports regarding the technical readiness of the Soyuz vehicle and the rocket, as well as all land services decided to approve the launch of Soyuz TMI-15M on the 24th of November with the next expedition to the International Space Station. So I would like to say that we're in the final stages and the Soyuz vehicle has been already delivered to the launch site. Also, I would like to ask the chief engineer, Yuri Lonchikov, report on the prime and the backup crews. Dear and esteemed members of the State Commission, the expeditions 42 and 43 crew members are as follows. Prime crew, Shkaplerov. Anton Nikolaevich, commander of Soyuz TMA 15M. Samantha Christoforetti, flight engineer, Expedition 42 43, flight engineer 2. And commander for Expedition 43. Terry Wirtz, flight engineer 2, commander of ISS 42. Backup crew, Oleg Kononenko, Soyuz commander and FE2 for ISS. Yui Kimir, flight engineer. Chell Lindgren, flight engineer for the Soyuz vehicle and the ISS. They have completed their training and successfully passed their tests and exams. The Medical Commission deemed the crew members ready and fit for the space flight. The State Commission and the Training Center for Cosmonauts and Astronauts reviewed the results and came to the conclusion that expeditions, Expedition 42-43 crews for Soyuz TMI-15M are ready. The program for the pre-launch and the training for the launch have been completed successfully. According to the State Commission, concluded that commander for Soyuz vehicle, Anton Shkaplerov and flight engineers Terry Wirtz and Samantha Christopheretti are ready. The backup crew is Oleg Kononenko, Lindgren Chell, and Kimi Yui. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, congratulations, Anton, Terry, Samantha, for completing all your training. Clearly, you're ready to uh, go fly. I did what I mentioned that in spite of the unfortunate loss of the Orb 3 vehicle, we still have a very healthy logistics supply train and plenty of consumables and research on board to be performed. In addition, you have uh, three uh, critical USOS EVAs at the beginning of the year where you will begin configuring the uh, US segment for docking vehicles once again. Uh, 
следующего коммерческого путевого корабля, которое произойдет, предположительно, в начале 2016 года, в конце 16-го, начале 17-го года. Итак, перед началом вашей критически важной, важнейшей миссии я хочу пожелать вам всего хорошего и благого. Thank you. Uh, I would like to start congratulating uh, uh, Cosmos and all our Russian colleagues for the flawless preparation of this mission. I would like to congratulate Anton, Terry and Samantha for the hard work they have put uh, on the preparation of this mission, and I wish really a great mission to them. Хочу поздравить членов экипажа Антона и Саманту с прекрасно проведенной подготовкой и с их готовностью к предстоящей миссии. A special word for our Samantha. We are very proud of her. Uh, all our team are behind them in order to support her mission. We are very proud of you, Samantha, of what you have done so far and what is ahead of you. Особое поздравление у меня подготовлено для Саманты. Мы очень горды тобой, Саманта, горды тем, что ты уже выполнила и что тебе еще предстоит выполнить. Thank you to the Italian Space Agency that has been uh, allowed uh, her agreement has been uh, functional to Samantha being uh, uh, performing this mission. Кроме того, хочу поблагодарить Итальянское космическое агентство, благодаря взаимодействию с которым стало возможным выполнение этой миссии. Our system on orbit on ground are ready. Our engineering team are there, and uh, we are declaring that we are ready to support the increment 42. Thank you very much. Dear Oleg Nikolaevich, dear members of the State Commission crew for Soyuz Semi 15M is ready for the flight and for Expedition 42-43. And I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all specialists who were training us for this mission. I would like to assure you that we're not going to let you down. We will work hard. And for our backup crew, I will see you in half a year. I'll see you soon, and they will finally become, after us, the prime crew. Samantha? Well, this is the end of our lengthy training, and I would like to just reiterate that, yes, we are ready. And I want to say a great thank you to everyone who participated in our training here uh, in, the Star C in Star City, in Houston, in Japan, everywhere. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has prepared our vehicle for launch and also to the search and rescue team who is going to uh, find us once we land and who are also supporting us during the launch. So I would like to also say thank you to the Italian Space Agency, to the European Space Agency as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. You have the floor. Esteemed members of the State Commission, we are ready for the mission. I would like to say thank you for all the training that we received in Star City, in Houston, in Europe, and in Japan. It was an honor, and I was lucky to be a member of such a great crew and to be together with Anton Shkaplerov and Samantha Cristoforetti. So thank you. Thank you. Anton. Samantha, Terry, I would like uh, to congratulate you with your certification and approval to be the prime crew. And I am sure, I have no doubts that you are going to complete all the tasks planned for your expedition and you will perform wonderfully. It was an honor to know you personally. 
And I know that you're not going to let us down in anything. And it will unite us. And the success of the mission will unite us afterwards. So good luck. Have a great mission. Godspeed. Godspeed. And we'll continue to work as planned. So here are the prime and the backup crews for Expedition 42-43. Commander of the Soyuz vehicle is Anton Shkaplerov. From the assignment of Prime and Backup Crew. Prime Crew consisting of Soyuz Vehicle Commander and ISS Flight Engineer Anton Shkapler. Flight Engineer for Soyuz is an Italian astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti. Flight Engineer for the Soyuz vehicle and for the International Space Station for Expedition 42-43 is a NASA astronaut, Terry Wirtz. The backup crew, commander for the Soyuz vehicle, Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko. Flight engineer for the Soyuz vehicle and the International Space Station, Yui Kimia, JAXA, Japan. And flight engineer for the Soyuz vehicle and the International Space Station, Chow Lindgren, NASA. Dear ladies and gentlemen, your questions are only welcome. The first question is from a NASA representative. NASA television. I have two questions for Terry Vertz. Uh, Terry, you're arriving at the uh, International Space Station during one of the busiest periods in history. Uh, after being part of an assembly flight on the station almost five years ago, uh, what are you looking forward to the most regarding the growth and maturity of the station and the gift of time over five and a half months in which to savor the experience? Thanks, Rob. The time that I flew before was the assembly time like you talked about, and uh, then the station transitioned into a utilization phase. And now, like you said, we're moving into a new phase where we're very busy with getting the station ready for the future, for future vehicles and reconfiguration. И сейчас нам предстоит выполнить очень много работы для того, чтобы подготовить станцию к реконфигурации для стыковки новых пилотируемых кораблей в будущем. What I'm most looking forward to is spending time in the cupola. On my first flight, I delivered the cupola, but we were too busy to have time in it. And on this flight, I'm really looking forward to spending lots and lots of time in the cupola. You did mention the reconfiguration of the station. You and Station Commander Barry Wilmore will conduct three spacewalks late January, early February to begin this critical work uh, to prepare uh, for this reconfiguration. What is the point of those three spacewalks? How critical are they to the future of station operations? The first two spacewalks we do will be getting ready to install a docking adapter that the future American uh, manned vehicles will be able to dock to. Uh, and the main goal there will be laying cables down for these docking adapters. Первые два выхода в открытый космос будут в основном посвящены тому, чтобы подготовить стыковочный адаптер для стыковки будущих кораблей и также прокладки кабелей к стыковочному механизму. And the third spacewalk will be primarily getting ready uh, a communications box called C2V2 that's also used for the new American vehicles. И uh, второй выход будет посвящен тому, чтобы при, uh, настроить, установить uh, систему связи для uh, так называемую CTV, C2V2 для стыковки будущих кораблей. And then finally we're doing some mechanical work on the arm uh, to keep it in good shape, just like you need to change the oil in your car. We need to work on the arm every few years uh, to keep the station robotic arm in good shape. Также нам предстоит провести ремонтно-восстановительные работы с манипулятором, которые необходимо выполнять каждые несколько лет 
для того, чтобы поддерживать манипуляторов в хорошем состоянии. And finally, these spacewalks are critical. Without these spacewalks, uh, we would not be able to move the station into the future. So it's very important for upgrading the station for the future. Thank you very much. Roscosmos representative. Hello, this is Oleg from Roscosmos. The question is for Samantha Cristoforetti. You were training in the United States and in Russia. What is the difference in the training for cosmonauts and astronauts? Because uh, in Russia, in, in Baikonur, there are a lot of traditions. Is there something comparable in the United States? Thank you. Well, I think there are... There are the differences are very slight in the training for the crew members. And the training is very thorough. It's very important. The main difference in the United States, uh, they use English. And in the Star City, they speak Russian. And so at the very end of the training, when you, are, you have your Soyuz training sessions, hands-on training, practical training, not just theoretical lectures, for us, uh, non-Russian crew members, uh, the difference is pretty big because you are training for uh, the flight to the station and for the return. But in the United States, in Japan and Europe, we are being trained for the operations on board the International Space Station. As for the traditions, it's better to ask Terry, and uh, I think he will be able to um, answer this question better, because I am sure they had some traditions uh, during the shuttle times. And let me answer the question in Italian now. In Russia or in the States, the response to me is that at the end, there are no fundamental differences. It is in the States that in the Russia, and then, naturally, also in Europe, in Canada, in Japan, to prepare the astronauts for the flight. And the attention, the attention to the detail is the same everywhere. The great difference, naturally, for us, who are not Terry, for me, Terry, in this case, there is the chemia that we are not Russian cosmonauts, that in Star City, in the city of the stars, we are occupied with the phase of launch and re-entry on the Soyuz, while in the States, Canada, in Canada, in Japan, in, uh, in Europa ci siamo occupati più che altro dell'attività che faremo a bordo della stazione spaziale. Uh, C'era un'altra domanda che riguardava le, le tradizioni pre-lancio e se ci siano delle tradizioni simili negli Stati Uniti, ma questa l'ho cercato di riferirla a Terry perché io non, purtroppo non ho avuto ancora modo di volare dagli Stati Uniti. In Russian? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, who has any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Anna Julia Scufri, I represent RT International. My question is to Samantha. Uh, Samantha, ciao. I would like to start by saying that as an Italian, it is for me an honor, and I feel very privileged to know that you will, will be going on this mission to space. So I would like to ask you, how does it feel to be the first female astronaut uh, of Italy to go to space, and also um, could you tell us a little bit more about the experiment that you will be doing uh, on uh, the influence of gravity on your dreams? Thank you. Um, I think one needs to distinguish what the significance is for, for something that you might do for the outside world that is watching a few yourself. I mean, I, I know for myself that there are, I have done nothing special to be the first Italian woman to fly to space. I just wanted to fly to space and I happen to be the first. So there's, you know, if I had done everything the same, if I, if I had worked as hard and if I had, had had the chance of becoming an astronaut, and if I had been the second, well, so what? For me, it would have been the same. Um, and I understand, of course, that this has and may well have a significance for, for, for people who see this, and if this can be an inspiration for, for women in Italy and in Europe, I'm obviously very happy about that. I think there was Thank you. part of the question was about the dreams, and that's going to be really short. There, I, I don't think there is an experiment about dreams, but there is an experiment of the Italian Space Agency about sleep and the quality of sleep, 
and uh, the testing of a hypothesis about why uh, sleep or the sleep quality in microgravity is not, um, usually is not as good as on Earth. So that is uh, what it's going to be about. And I believe very shortly in Italian as well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, la domanda era che cosa significhi per me essere la prima eh, donna italiana ad andare nello spazio. La risposta è stata che um, secondo me bisogna distinguere quella che può essere la prospettiva dall'esterno e la propria prospettiva di individuo. Da un mio punto di vista di individuo il mio grande sogno è sempre stato quello di andare nello spazio e se tutto fosse stato uguale nel mio percorso uh, di, di preparazione e nella realizzazione di, di questo sogno, tranne il fatto di essere la seconda o la terza piuttosto che la prima, per me personalmente non sarebbe cambiato molto. Però naturalmente capisco che, che possa avere un, un significato e possa magari essere una fonte di ispirazione per, per altre donne in, in Italia, in Europa e quindi questo naturalmente mi fa piacere. C'era una domanda sullo studio dei sogni nello spazio. Um, io avrò un esperimento dell'Agenzia Spaziale Italiana che non studia i sogni ma studia il, il sonno e quindi la testa un'ipotesi, si chiama wearable monitoring e testa un'ipotesi un di, di spiegazione del perché la qualità del sonno nello spazio non è um, altrettanto buona di quanto normalmente è a terra. Good afternoon, this is Georgi for NTV station and I have a question for Thierry Wirtz and Anton Shkaplerov. It's a pretty much a historic mission because it's going to deliver your crew member Samantha Cristoforetti to the station and you're going to have uh, Yelena Serova and Samantha Cristoforetti for four months together on board the station with you. Are you do you have any concerns regarding that? Well, you know, I think everything's going to be fine. Samantha and Yelena are highly professional crew members. They are just as much of a crew member as uh, we are. We have, we are a great team. We're training together. So, no concerns here. Maybe Terry has something to say. I absolutely agree with Anton are a great crew. We work very well together and um, I'm excited to fly with Samantha as an astronaut and uh, it's it's going to be a great mission. Channel one. My question is for Samantha Cristoforetti. So the question is, oh, I know that two women in one kitchen do not get along together and you're going to be with Yelena um, on board. So I go also, since you're such a beautiful woman and women sometimes like makeup, are you going to apply any makeup on board the station? Oh, hold on. What was the first question? Okay, two women, two housewives in one kitchen. Well, there are two kitchens on board the station, so there will be no problems. Maybe, maybe you should ask Terry. Maybe he wants to take some makeup with him. Oh, I just wanted to ask, uh, um, are you going to take any makeup with you? So something that a, a woman usually takes on a trip. Samantha is going to have a great hairdresser. I'm not quite sure about the makeup, but I'm going to have a great hair stylist because Terry has been training so hard to uh, to give haircuts, so I'm pretty sure that we're going to be fine. Hi, uh, this is the question for all of you, for Terry, Anton and Samantha, the same question for all of you. I need uh, three words to describe this day the day before the departure, in three words. I want to see if they are the same uh, words. Starting from Terry in English, after Anton and uh, Samantha in Italian. Uh, 
вопрос для всех вторых членов экипажа. Терри может быть ответ, ответить на английском и Антон, и Саманта. Затем ответит на итальянском, может быть. Основные три слова, которые, которыми вы можете описать в сегодняшний день вашу предстартовую подготовку и что вы чувствуете сейчас. Dream come true. Мечты сбываются. If you want, I can change the question. Уже ответил. I have already given my response. Счастлив. Happy. Собран. Полностью. Prepared. Ready for the mission. End and new start. Four words. End and new start. Конец и начало. Следующий. Samantha, ce le dici anche in italiano? Un, uh, un traguardo e un nuovo inizio. Ok, invece da Samantha, che cosa hai fatto oggi, eh, la giornata di oggi, come, cosa, come, come si è evoluta? Ho già dimenticato la mattina. <ride> ah no, è stata una giornata dedicata soprattutto alla famiglia e agli amici che sono venuti a, a salutarci, e anche quindi, mh, abbiamo avuto tutta una serie di incontri alcuni proprio qui in questa sala attraverso questo vetro per non avere dei contatti diretti con, uh, i, uh, questa mattina con i rappresentanti dell'Agenzia Spaziale Europea e dell'Agenzia Spaziale Italiana che, che hanno avuto uh, così l'attenzione di venire qui a, a Baikonur per il, per il mio lancio di domani e anche così la, è stata anche un'opportunità per dare gli ultimi aggiornamenti per esempio sullo stato degli, degli esperimenti italiani su tutta una serie di programmi anche um, e, come si dice, educazionali di, 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 con le scuole che, che faremo durante la, la missione e poi ho avuto la possibilità di, di incontrare diciamo, il, il gruppo esteso quindi 16-17 persone che sono venute uh, qui per il lancio diciamo, che sono ospiti miei, la mia famiglia, i miei amici e poi ho avuto un, insomma, un tempo più esteso per uh, per salutare la, la, la famig familiare più vicini. Un'ultima domanda, come ti senti? Ah, cambio, cambio ogni momento, il, il momento molto coinvolta emotivamente, in altri momenti mi sento come in un film dove sto guardando qualcun altro che, che, sta, andando, che sta partendo invece che essere io, quindi un, un, un cambiamento continuo di prospettiva, diciamo, alle volte mi sento dentro, alle volte mi sento quasi fuori a guardarmi. Good afternoon, Itar Tars. I have two questions. The first one goes to Anton. Could you please uh, tell us if you're going to be using a new SKPI system? I know that um, crew members are going to start testing this system. Well, actually, if uh, the system is delivered, um, then I, we will be testing it. But for now, no. And another question to the whole crew. Are you going to be uh, blogging or being active on like, Twitter or maybe Facebook and uh, keep up blogs? Yes, it's a very good tradition. I will actually have my own blog. And I will make my posts, pictures, post pictures, write something about life on board, what we're doing, and it's going to be published on Roscosmos web page, and then we're going to have the Twitter pages page and an Instagram page. I hope so. And it was the question to the health crew, what about your other crew members? Of course, I'm hoping that I will have the time and the opportunity to to be active in social networks. Of course, uh, I hope that I will have my readers who would want to know more about space exploration and life in space. Of course, I'm going to have Twitter, uh, space, uh, Facebook, um, Google page, and Flickr. If we're going to be active on social media and blog and, and, and things like that, so I just mentioned that I'll, I'll, I'll certainly have Twitter and Facebook and uh, Google Plus and Flickr, and uh, uh, so uh, for sure there's going to be uh, plenty of ways uh, to follow to follow our mission. 
Of course, I will be using nasa.gov website and then Twitter and Facebook and Insta Instagram, and I will be Astro Terry on Instagram. So there will be a plenty of pages to follow. Ben trovata, Samantha. Eccoti qui, vicino al tuo sogno, frutto di un lungo addestramento, una lunga formazione da anni. Quanto il background in aeronautica militare e quel tipo di addestramento ti è stato di aiuto, è stato importante? E un messaggio a tutto il personale dell'aeronautica che con passione e attenzione ti seguirà anche sui social. Quello, del, quello dell'astronauta è un mestiere dove ti rendi conto, soprattutto quando arrivi dove, dove sono oggi, al giorno prima della partenza, che parti con, con tutta te stessa, con tutto il tuo background, con tutto quello che hai imparato nella vita. E sicuramente uno, una parte importante del, del mio background professionale è il, il mio addestramento come pilota militare, anche se eh, non ho eh, mai avuto la possibilità di fare molta vita operativa a, a un gruppo di volo, però semplicemente il fatto di essere addestrata come è stata addestrata come pilota da combattimento mi mi ha dato uh, molto in termini di, di competenze, ma anche di fiducia in me stessa, che sicuramente mi hanno aiutato, soprattutto nel ruolo di ingegnere di bordo della, della Soyuz, che uh, richiede insomma, la, la gestione di fasi molto dinamiche, molto critiche del, del volo spaziale. E un messaggio naturalmente a tutti i miei colleghi e colleghe dell'Arma de, dell Azzurra, Um, un, un grazie per tutto il calore che ho, che ho sentito intorno a me, per, per questo senso di, di appartenenza che, che sento sempre ogni volta che mi capita di ritornare in, in aeronautica militare per un, per un qualunque motivo, anche se sono stata uh, via ormai da diversi anni, però insomma, ogni volta è come tornare in famiglia, quindi un, un, un grazie e, e spero insomma, che continuerete a, a seguirmi, cercherò di condividere il più possibile di questa missione in modo da portare tutti quanti con me, quelli che, che vorranno insomma, partecipare e seguire. <coughs> uh, the question was how much the uh, training in the Italian Air Force or in general my training as a pilot has helped me in, uh, in, my, in, in my training as an, as an astronaut and in getting ready for the space flight. And I, um, I, I really feel when you, when you get to this point, like on the day before the launch, you re I think you realize that you're, you're going to space with all of yourself, with uh, everything you've learned in your life, with all of your experiences, all of your background. And for me, of course, a big part is um, my, my background as a military pilot. Uh, even if I uh, wasn't <coughs> for a long time, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, fly as a military pilot for a long time, but even just simply the fact of having been trained as a combat pilot, Um, has given me a lot of um, skills and the right mindset and the attention to detail and even the confidence in myself that I think has helped me a lot in, in my training, especially my Soyuz training. <coughs> my name is Mitina Yana, I'm from Yekaterinburg, and I have a question for the whole crew. Could you tell me if you were actually dreaming about spaceflight when you were a child? Well, hello. Thank you for such a nice question. And when I was, well, probably I can say for all three of us that, that we wanted to be crew members. We wanted to go to space. So we first of all became professional pilots and then we have been chosen by our corresponding space agencies to become astronauts and cosmonauts. So we are here now. Thank you. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, more questions. Hello, I'm from Russia today. And I have a question for you, Anton. Could you please tell us what you feel uh, about your first space flight and this upcoming mission? And then I have a question for Samantha Cristoforetti. You are going to be performing an experiment, uh, uh, drinking coffee uh, in space. So aren't you concerned about that? Well, I can say for sure that for my right before my first expedition, I realized that I knew nothing about space. I was pretty nervous. 
Now my head is full, it's crammed with all the thoughts about this uh, expedited scheme for the docking of the Soyuz. And I am not concerned at all. I am thinking about all the tasks that I will have to perform on board the station and what I will have to do within the first six hours after the launch. I didn't know anything like Anton also, uh, and I was very excited. But as a fighter pilot and test pilot, um, I'm able to not worry or not get too excited about things and just concentrate on the mission. But now that I know what space is like and I know how awesome it is, um, I do have a little bit of excitement to get back to seeing the Earth from space. Well, I am not concerned about coffee and its influence on my sleep schedule. I have no trouble waking up. There was a question about the coffee machine. Sometimes, maybe in the morning. Coffee machine of the Italian Space Agency and espresso machine, actually. That's coming up hopefully next spring. And um, the question was, why um, am I not afraid that it's going to be a bad, it's going to have a bad effect on our, our sleep? So we will not be able to fall asleep at night, if I understood correctly. And my answer was that I, I, all my life, I never had any problems falling asleep. The only problems I have is getting up in the morning. So I think it's going to be fine. Um, in Italian, dunque, la domanda era se ci sono, se ho paura di qualche effetto negativo della macchina espresso in termini di qualità del sonno e di capacità di addormentarsi la, la sera e la, la mia risposta è che io personalmente nella mia vita non ho mai avuto problemi ad addormentarmi la sera ma semmai svegliarmi la mattina, quindi il caffè probabilmente aiuterà soltanto. This is Volsky community, Samara. The question is for Kimi and Chell, you have inspected the Proton rocket. So what are your thoughts about the rocket itself? Well, it's a, it's a beautiful rocket. I'm very excited for the Prime crew um, to be able to fly on it. Uh, after we returned yesterday, I reported to, to Anton and, and Samantha and Terry that uh, they have a beautiful uh, vehicle waiting for them um, on their launch day. Yes, it was a wonderful experience, and as uh, Chell already said, it's a beauty. It's, it's a huge rocket. It's the rocket that is going to bring us to the space station. So I felt so tiny in comparison to it, and I was really excited about the, the to see the the rocket that will bring me to the space station hi my name is Philip I'm a student I want to ask Terry a question um, what would be the most important things for you at the start at and uh, in the process of rocket launch so during the process of launch, uh, the most important thing for the crew is to monitor um, all the procedures and steps that, that happen during launch so that we're ready to take action in case there's a problem. Uh, во время uh, процесса выведения самое главное для нас это работать и отслеживать, контролировать выполнение всех действий в соответствии, в соответствии с бортовой документацией, чтобы быть всегда готовым в случае возникновения нештатной ситуации. So you have to be ready for that immediate transition from gravity to weightlessness. It's a it's a big change that you just have never experienced in your life before. Rob Navius, NASA TV, once again for Terry. Uh, a year from now, the station is going to mark the 15th anniversary of its human occupancy, permanent occupancy. How significant is that achievement in your mind, and how struck are you by the accomplishments that have uh, been achieved over a decade and a half on this facility? Well, first of all, congratulations on the 100th anniversary of NACA, the um, precursor of NASA today, uh, the original American Aerospace Agency. 
And uh, as far as the space station goes, I think that 100 years from now, 500 years from now, people will look back on this as the initial baby steps that we took going into the solar system. And the same way that we look back on Columbus and the other explorers 500 years ago, this is the way people will look at this time in history. Прежде всего, позвольте поздравить с этой замечательной датой, годовщиной. И я думаю, что через 100 или 500 лет люди будут оглядываться назад и смотреть на станцию как первый шаг в освоении дальнего космоса. И Uh, and, and the second part of the question, Rob, um, as far as the accomplishments, technologically, the space station is amazing um, in its size, complexity, and what it's able to do. But more important than that, the uh, international relations that we've built and sustained and the cooperation that we've shown, I think, will ultimately be the best um, accomplishment. It's the most amazing accomplishment of the International Space Station is our, the friendship that we have. И по поводу второй части вопроса, по поводу достижения, технических достижений в области станции. Разумеется, станция в плане техники является огромным достижением, огромная конструкция, размеры. Но самое главное, это то, что это результат международного сотрудничества. И это является символом нашей работы совместной. Unfortunately, the time is up for our press conference, and let's say thank you to the crew members. And could you please stand together for the pictures? Or maybe we can move the chairs a little bit. And let's take the picture for the prime crew of the prime crew. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, my colleagues, and let's wish good luck to the crew members. Godspeed.